Good evening. I'm Andrew Salata. I'm Public Affairs Specialist for the Social Security Administration. And before we start our weekly show, I just want to talk a little bit about our upcoming holiday. Memorial Day is just about 10 days away, and um, our offices will be closed. And also on Memorial Day, we just need to remember that we honor our soldiers and service members who have given their lives for our nation. Social Security re respects the heroism and courage of our military service members, and we remember those who have given their lives in defense of freedom. Part of how we honor service members is the way we provide Social Security benefits. The unexpected loss of a family member is a difficult experience for anyone. Social Security helps by providing benefits to protect service members' dependents. Widows, widowers, and dependent children may be eligible for Social Security survivor benefits. You can learn more about Social Security benefits at socialsecurity.gov slash survivors. It's also important to recognize that service members who are still with us, especially those who have been wounded, just as they served us, we have the obligation to serve them. Social Security has benefits to assist veterans when an injury prevents them from returning to active duty. Wounded military service members can also receive expedited processing of their Social Security disability claims. For example, Social Security will provide expedited processing of disability claims filed by veterans who have a U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs VA compensation rating of 100% permanent and total P&T. Depending on the situation, some family members of military personnel, including dependent children and in some cases spouses, may be eligible to receive benefits. You can get answers to commonly asked questions and find useful information about the application process at www.socialsecurity forward slash wounded warriors. So keep in mind as uh, before I introduce my guest today, just want to remind you that you can call in and speak with us, ask any questions. And remember the phone number is 312-738-1060. All right. So my guest today is John Marshall. I'll let him tell you a little bit about his job or role at Social Security? <clears throat> Hi. Um, yes, I'm John Marshall. I'm the Chicago Metropolitan and Northern Indiana Area Working Centers Coordinator, and I am the, also <clears throat> the SOAR Homelessness Coordinator for, um, for the same area, for the Metropolitan Chicago and Northern Indiana. And what that means, I'm the point person for the uh, agency to try to help people with disabilities who want to work, to work, and work with agencies to try to help them to, uh, to help people with disabilities to work if that's what they want to do. I'm also help um, the agencies to try to help fill out our disability forms for homeless people who are, you know, who potentially could be eligible for supplemental security income or social security disability insurance so they could get the uh, money that they need in order to get off the street. And that's an important thing to think about. When individuals think about our Social Security Disability Program, a lot of times there's that bad connotation or thinking about the Social Security Disability where it's a benefit that isn't going to those that need it. And that's something that we always like to talk about. We like to remind individuals of the importance of Social Security Disability and how we can assist individuals. And one of the statistics, just to think about it, as of December 2016, you know, our average payment for disability benefits is less than $1,200. So it's less than $12,000 a year, or it's a little more than $12,000 a year for individuals. So it's not like individuals on disability are getting a large amount of money, but it's enough money to help them make ends meet and at least ease some worries. And with um, 56 million Americans living with disability, that falls into one of about $1,103. So even though those disability benefits may not seem like a lot, for those that receive those benefits, it helps out tremendously. And with John's role of helping individuals return to work, we also take that fear out of trying to uh, go back to work or go through that work incentive program. 
So before we talk more about our disability benefits, because we're going to talk a little bit about what's the difference between them, we have a caller. So let's go straight for that caller. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Hi. Um, my question... Uh, my question is, um, I am. I just got married, and I need to change my name on my Social Security card. Um, can I do that online, or do I have to go in person to the office? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, what we're doing is we're trying to expand our services online. Right now, we have about 16 states where we can verify individuals' driver's licenses to get replacement cards online. Unfortunately, Illinois isn't one of those 16 states yet. But if you know someone in Wisconsin or Michigan, you can let them know about it. But even if you can do your replacement card online, that's only for a strict replacement card, not for any name changes. For your situation, since you need a name change, you will have to visit our Social Security office. And uh, you would need to bring in um, your current ID, a marriage certificate to show that name change possibility. And that's a pretty good question. With June being historically a big um, wedding month, we may have a lot of uh, viewers out there having that same question. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of ways where you can find where your local office is. Uh, one way is to just go and visit our website at socialsecurity.gov. Uh, we have our field office locator online, so you just put in the zip code and it will show you where your office is. You can also call our 800 number at 1-800-772-1213 and you can use our automated services to find an office or speak to a representative. We have our representative hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Of course, you're probably thinking, yeah, I know about those 800 numbers, I have a long wait. Well, you know, at Social Security, we average about 5 million calls a month to our 800 number that we answer. So we've uh, been had our 800 number now for a little over 25 years, and we've actually had more than a billion calls answered. So you're thinking, well, you must have answered everyone's calls then in the U.S. <laughs> but, you know, there's always questions that come up, so you may need to call us again. That's why we have, we're busy, but that's a couple ways to contact us. So, um... We have another caller. Uh, we'll just go right into that next caller. We can always talk about our programs as we find yes, time. Yes, so. sir. Yes, sir. Great show as always. But I want to know, I'm 69 years old. I worked most of my life. I paid into Social Security all the time. But I was wondering if there are people that, that are perfectly able to work and didn't work all their lives are they entitled to Social Security? And if they are, why? Okay, so the question is, for those that can work and have worked all their lives, can they get Social Security benefits? Is that your question? And why? Uh, well, you know, we're talking about the disability program, and that's usually, um, we're going to talk just about the definition of that in a little bit. But Social Security provides many benefits. First of all, many of you think of Social Security as a retirement benefit. So for those that have worked all their lives, when they reach retirement age, they have a Social Security benefit. They have that safety net for old age so that way they don't have to work their whole lives. And then as I talked about at the beginning with our, for military families where if someone passes away, we have that for anyone. Any uh, individual that has a family, is working, paid into Social Security and may pass away, uh, we have survivor benefits for that young family, for those children until they graduate high school or special needs children at any age. So there's a lot of programs that we have. So even though one person may pay into Social Security, Social Security is a life insurance policy for you and your family. So with that, let's talk a little bit about that life insurance policy. With Social Security, we have those two disability programs that I had started out with the statistics where we had the Social Security benefit that's a little under $1,200 a month on average. And it really depends on your work history. And then we have the SSI program that has a set rate for individuals or couples. Uh, how do both of them work? And I guess what's the difference between the two, John? Okay, when you initially file, and this kind of goes to the question that was that, that last caller asked, um, what, what is involved when filing for so, uh, Social Security disability insurance benefits or supplemental security income benefits, and they're two different programs. But what's 
um, similar in both instances is that we have to first determine that you're dis disabled in the first place. And in order for you to be disabled, and for uh, for our under our definition, is that you have to be able to uh, to uh, not be able to work and earn at least one thousand one hundred and seventy dollars in, in in a given month uh, <clears throat> for twelve months in order to be considered to be disabled according to our standards or um, have a disability that's suspected to end in, 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 end in death. So, you know, so initially we look at, you know, you, we look at your capacity to work and earn that $1,170 a month. Now, um, for Social Security disability insurance, and this is, and this is more, and just like the name says, it's more like an insurance benefit. It's when you work and you pay um, FICA taxes. That's the FICA taxes that come out of your check that, that leaves you with a, you know, with a lower net than you grossed. And, you know, and, and so, um, but the FICA taxes is the Social Security tax that you, that you pay to become insured for Social Security benefits when you retire or if you become disabled, um, if you're under the age of, of the full retirement age, if you're under the age of, of 66. Now, um, and now if you're under the age of, and where it's normally expect people to pay um, uh, enough Social Security taxes for at least five out of the last ten years. If you're over the age of thir if you're over the age of 31, it's less amount of or quarters of coverage that um, than um, you would need if you were if you were younger than that. So it's so this Social Security disability insurance, which normally comes on the third or alternate Wednesday is on a month of a month, is is an insurance benefit as opposed to a needs based benefit. A needs based benefit are is supplemental security income. And it's, based, and it's based on need, and we take in account your income and your resources to determine whether you're eligible for it. So that's essentially the difference between the two benefits. Now, and to answer your question, the, 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 last, um, the last caller's question is about people's capacity to work once they get on benefits. Once they get, you get on benefits, we have a number of work incentives that, within Social Security that tries to help you get to the point where you're able to, to work again and be able to, you know, either reduce your dependency on, on Social Security um, benefits via Social Security Disability Insurance or SSI or be able to ultimately get off. So, and one of the work incentives that we have is Ticket to Work. And everybody who's receives um, Social Security benefits, either Social Security Disability Insurance benefits or SSI, between the ages of 18 and 64 is eligible for a ticket. And it's a voucher system that you, that, that you use in order to get services from uh, about 66 um, employment network agencies that we, um, we have contracted with so that you would be able to give that voucher over to them and they'll be able to provide you, you know, with need what you need in order to try to get back to work, help you with your resume, help you with your, you know, with your ability to address in the interviewing process and actually try to help you to actually find a job because if they do find you a job, that organization can get paid for finding you that job. All right, that's a really good way of covering it because I know one of the biggest questions we always have is, well, I'm getting disability benefits, but I don't know what kind it is, whether it's Social mm -hmm. Security or SSI. So it kind of lets people know. Of course, we always do it the easy way. If you're, get, if you're getting SSI disability benefits, it's coming on a first day of the month. Mm -hmm. And if it's Social Security disability benefits, it could be the third day or uh, later Wednesday, a subsequent Wednesday. So that's one of the easiest ways we try and get people to know about things. Uh, you know, before we go on and talk a little bit more, or... Well, I want to remind everyone out there that this is an interactive show. We've had a couple of calls already, and we'd be happy to talk with you. All you need to do is pick up the phone and dial 312-738-1060 and ask us a question. We'll be happy to help you with Social Security questions. If it's anything outside of Social Security, we'll see what we can know, but we're the experts for the Social Security side. And speaking of Social Security, we just recently passed Mother's Day. So for all the mothers, uh, happy Mother's Day. And what we also do during Mother's Day is release our baby names. So for those that may not have noticed yet, if you visit our Social Security's website, you'll see a link for our special delivery to check out baby names. Here in the U.S., last year's uh, number one baby names were the same as the year before. We have Noah for boys and Emma for girls. 
Illinois is a little different, though. In Illinois, we still have Noah as the popular boy name, but Olivia, who was number two in the nation, is number one in Illinois in our hearts. Mm -hmm. So, when we have you visit Social Security's website, you can always learn a little bit more about us. We are there, day one, with baby names and a gift that lasts a lifetime. We are there as you grow, protecting you and those you love. We are there when you get your first job, helping you to save for the future. We are there when you marry your sweetheart to help secure your new life together. We are there if the unexpected happens to help you see life from a new perspective. We are there when you start your next chapter to make sure you get off to a great start. And we are there when you lose your soulmate to help make sure you will be all right. We are with you through life's journey. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. Get to know us and see what you can do online at socialsecurity.gov. So now that we're back, just wanted to kind of wrap up. It's a nice way to remind you about Social Security's insurance program. And that's one of the great ways to have a better idea of what to expect. So let's return to our disability part of the program. And let's talk a little bit about how someone can file. I mean, uh, the traditional ways everyone thinks about is coming down to the office. But if you have a uh, condition, a medical condition that's keeping you from work, uh, you've probably visited our Social Security offices already and already noticed how comfortable our chairs are to begin with. Mm -hmm. So there's some ways that you can get around it. And what's the easiest way individuals can uh, start the process for disability? Well, actually, you know, um, you don't have to actually go into the Social Security office anymore in order to start the, the entire process. We do have uh, the capacity, you do have the capacity to go online and be able to, to file a Social Security disability application and get all the needed forms right over the Internet. And, our, um, on, and we have an online disability application, which is convenient, secure, and when you decide to apply, you can begin looking at our disability starter kit that, at www.socialsecurity.gov slash disability. Now, applying online for disability offers several advantages. One, you can start your disability claim immediately when there's no need to wait for an appointment. You can apply for it, and two, you can apply for the convenience of your home on any computer. And then you can avoid trips to the Social Security office with, um, and, and save you time and money. Now, you can actually file online uh, for Social Security disability insurance. Now, right now, we don't have a real, the real broad capacity in order for folks to be able to file for supplemental security income online, but that's coming down the pike. And we actually do have it started out where individuals who haven't filed for SSI before uh, do not have bank accounts, things like that. Uh, the easier <laughs> programs we've already started to do online so that way there's a, pro there's a possibility that you may be able to take care of both parts of it online and make it the process a lot quicker. Right. But even if you can only do the Social Security application online, well, we have your paperwork and then we could just recontact you to get that additional information. And what's even better about it is once you get used to using our online services, you can create that My Social Security account to get access to your information. It's like banking online with Social Security. And for those cha times when you may disagree with our decision, we also have the ability for you to appeal your decision online. So you can um, contact Social Security by going on our website, uh, and then you can file your appeal, whether it's a reconsideration or a hearing, and the process will do it for you. So it's pretty straight and easy, and we try and make things as easy as possible for you because sometimes that challenge is to just know what to expect, and that's why we offer the services whether it's in the office or calling us at our 800 number to set up an appointment. That's one great way to contact us using our automated services. So if you start the process online but you may need assistance, you can always contact us to set up that rest of that process online. So as we wrap things up, I just wanted to go with one more uh, part of 
to work inside of a program because some of those um, numbers change. I know John talked about our substantial gainful activity amount, and I'm going to put that on the screen. But we have different amounts, whether you're uh, visually impaired, we have the trial works process, and things like that. And also, I would like John to talk a little bit about the student benefits because a lot of times we may have children that are receiving disability benefits and we may be afraid that if they go to work they may lose those benefits and more importantly that medical assistance that comes with it. So as I put some stuff on the screen I'll let John talk a little bit about it. Yeah, um, so what do we what we have is is a, a number of work incentives within both of the programs for Social Security Disability Insurance and Supplemental Security Income that, that tries to ease you um, make it easier for you to start back working if you feel that you're able to you know, able to work again and some of the um, some of the work incentives help you in terms of the amount of the income that you maintain some of the income that you're receiving from social security disability insurance or SSI supplemental security income and um, I always say what uh, supplemental security income is always in your best interest to work because you're always going to end up getting more money because we count less than half of the wages against your against your supplemental security the income example if you made a um, if you made a thousand dollars in wages for SSI you still will be eligible for about two hundred and seventy five dollars in SSI as opposed to if you know on a monthly basis you get the full benefit rate is seven hundred thirty five dollars a month so you can increase your your wages substantially that way if you're a student under the age of twenty two it becomes even more advantageous to you while you're receiving supplemental security income because you're able to earn $1,790 a month and still get all $735 of your SSI. I often tell parents that and, often, and, and they become flabbergasted because of that because they realize that they can bring in that much more money into the household and realize and not lose a dime of their, their supplemental else security income. So it becomes really advantageous for a young person to work when, they, you know, when they're under the age of 22. Plus, they only need six quarters of coverage in, um, to become insured themselves. So the more that the student works, the, the, um, the more that they will, might be able to become insured for regular Social Security disability insurance. Yeah, and one of the key things with Social Security disability insurance benefits is after two years of Social Security disability, Medicare uh, coverage comes in. That's right. So it won't just be Medicaid through the state of Illinois, but you'd also have Medicare coverage, so it'd be working hand-in-hand -hand to maybe provide that additional assistance medical wise and and for people that are on SSI you know it, in state of Illinois you get free Medicaid in the state of Illinois if you're on supplemental security income and that means no spend downs no anything and even if you get you have to get to the even when you get to the point where you zero out in cash benefits for supplemental security income you get to over fifteen hundred dollars a month where you get to the, the, the zero out point you still are, could be eligible for something for Medicaid in the state of Illinois um, <clears throat> state of Illinois with no spend downs because because you have to make more than $27,000 in order to, to really become not be eligible for free Medicaid in the state of Illinois when you're on SSI. So it, it, you're able to maintain your medical coverage for both Medicare and for, for Medicaid when you try your hand out and working when you get on Social Security Disability Insurance Benefits or SSI. So, John, if someone is thinking about going back to work or trying work while they're on disability, who would they call? What's the quickest and easiest way to do it? The best way to, 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 to do it is to, if you want to use Ticket to Work, you can you know, call the, the Maximus um, phone number that, that we have. There's an 866 number. You can contact us, contact any Social Security office in order to get all these numbers. We don't have it right here, right here for you. You also should contact, if you're in the city of the Chicago, you can contact the Mayor's Office of People with Disabilities at 2102 West um, Ogden Avenue, and they could do benefit planning for you, basically to tell you exactly what's going to happen to all your benefits, Social Security, SSI, or, um, you know, or food stamps, or Medicaid, Medicare, you know, Section 8, anything that's going to that happen that can be changed by the fact that you're working. All right. Well, thank you, John. And as we are wrapping up, Again, let's return to Memorial Day and acknowledgement of those who died for our country, those who have served, and those who serve today. We at Social Security honor and thank our veterans. So thank you, and hopefully your Memorial Day will be a pleasant one, and we'll be there 
all of us will be there to thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for your service.